the leadership of Bishop Dr. Mark S. Herod and co-pastor Rev. Kathy Ann Herod. We are located in the beautiful island of Barbados. Join us Sundays at 8.30 a.m. and on Wednesdays at 7.30 p.m. for our services. Remember to like, share, and follow our Facebook page every day as we share daily truths from the Word of God with our Bishop, Dr. Mark S. Herod. We look forward to seeing you come and experience the power of God as Love and Light Ministries proclaiming the love of Christ, the power and the light of the word. God bless you. Good morning, saints, and welcome to our Sunday morning service. It's so nice to have you here with us this Sunday. It's a beautiful day in Barbados. Hallelujah. A good day to praise the Lord. We want to welcome those on Facebook. It's so nice to have you with us this morning. And we're going to praise the Lord. Isaiah 6, 1 says, In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. I was looking at that scripture this week. And I realized that the train was so long that it filled the temple. It was because every time a king conquered another king, piece of his throne, his train was added onto that king's train. So our king conquered everything. That's why his train is so long and it fills the temple. Hallelujah. He's high and lifted up because he's higher than any other king. Hallelujah. He has conquered sickness, cancer, diabetes. Conquered. I see it conquered on the train this morning. Grief, sadness. Conquered. I see it conquered on the train this morning. Whatever you're going through, say conquered. Conquered. Conquered in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Let's go up to the throne. Let's go up to the temple and let us open our minds and get a revelation of our king this morning. High and lifted up and conquering all. Whatever you're going through, it is conquered. Hallelujah. We praise you, mighty king. We glorify you, king of kings. We worship you, king of kings. Conquered. Our word for today is conquered. You conquered it all. Hallelujah. Worship conquered this morning. It's going to be mighty. It's going to be great. The word conquered, mighty God. It will come forth with power and unction, oh God, to scatter the enemy, to give us new life, new strength, new hope. Hallelujah. Whatever, dear Lord, we are going through in our lives, we see conquered. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless you, Lord. We are so grateful that we know this King of Kings this morning and we can worship him. Oh, wonderful Lord. We thank you for the gift of your love. We thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you that we know you as King of Kings and a mighty conqueror. Hallelujah. We pray that your spirit, oh God, will hover over us this morning. Father, we will experience the conquered king, the conquering king, mighty God. We will experience the victorious king, high and lifted up, oh God, this morning. In the name of Jesus, bless the worship team, anoint them, oh God, as they come to conquer through worship this morning. Bless the word as it comes, oh God. It will conquer this morning every evil, oh God. Oh Lord, let your people come with rejoicing, knowing that whatever they're going through, it's already conquered in the name of Jesus. We pray for the equipment, we pray for the uh, musicians, mighty God conquered in the name of Jesus. And we thank you and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Glasses. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, don't pause praising God this morning.
continue to praise the Lord. Continue to give God the praise. Amen. For our God is indeed worthy of the glory. He is worthy of the honor. There's no God like Jehovah. Come on. Have you brought your praise with you this morning? Have you brought your worship this morning? Come on. Let's give God the best praise in the house. He is deserving. He's deserving of the glory. He's deserving of the honor. And he is deserving of the praise. Just from the word of God this morning, from Psalms 100. And we know this psalm by heart. It says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Come on. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that have made us and not we ourselves. It says we are the people of his pastor. Come on. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Has you brought your praise this morning? As you enter the gates? Come on. And enter his courts of praise. Has you brought, have you brought your best praise this morning? Hallelujah. It says be thankful unto him. It's time to give thanks. It's time to bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. Do I have a witness this morning? The Lord is good. And his mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Let's read that number five again. It says, for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endures to all generations. Come on. Think about your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your great-great-great-great-grandchildren, your grandmother that has passed, your father that is still alive, your mother that is with you. Come on, all the generations will be blessed because as God, we intend to give him the praise this morning. We intend to give him the worship. We intend to exalt the name of the Lord. Come on, let's give him a shout of praise this morning. Let's give him a shout of worship. Hallelujah, 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 God. We enter your gates of thanksgiving in your courts of praise. We bless your name, God. Oh, we just want to bless the name of the Lord. We just want to praise the name of the Lord. I'm not convinced this morning that you're ready to worship him. Come on, shout again. Let's give him a shout. Let's give him a praise. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. If we ever sing no song this morning, we should still be giving God praise. We should still be giving many times. We should still be giving him a best shout because let everything that have breath praise the Lord. His word says, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So come on, let's praise the Lord today. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on and bless the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Oh, praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise the Lord with me. Help me praise the Lord. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and praise. On, praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Praise the Lord with me. Come on and pray. 
step on. Let David declare in Psalms 27, 4, he says, One thing have I desired of the Lord, come on, that I may seek and I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, and to behold the beauty of the Lord, come on, and to inquire in his temple this morning. Come on. The Bible says that we are the temples, come on, of the Most High God this morning. So as we praise, as we worship, come on, let's give a best praise this morning. If we are the temples of God, and we are carrying around the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, come on, we ought to identify ourselves with the Lord this morning. We ought to identify ourselves with a God that is greater, a God that turned water into wine today, come on. Our God is greater, our God is stronger. There's no God like our God this morning, hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. You turn into wine. Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise. There's no one like you.
God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like Jehovah. There's no God like
Jesus. That's who you are. You're greater than the greatest. He's a sovereign Lord today. Amen. Hallelujah. He's greater than everything. He's greater than all things that were and that has been. Come on. I'm not like him. He is and he will be and he forever will be. Nothing, no one can compare to the God that he is. Come on. I hope you brought your washcloths. I hope you brought your praise garment. Come on. I hope you brought something that you can wave in his presence today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you feel the presence of the Lord in this place? Can you feel the presence of the Lord over this side? Can you feel the presence over this side? Come on. Let's focus on God. Don't just look on the outside and see who's coming in. We're already in. Let's give him the praise. And the presence is already here. Hallelujah. So we're going to exalt his name today.
do. Just trust Him, believe Him. I said you will receive it. I can feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm gonna get my blessing right now. I can feel the presence of the Lord, and I'm gonna get my blessing right now. I can feel Him moving. Your blessing is at the door this morning. Your blessing is at the door. Your blessing is waiting for you. Hallelujah. But you got to praise to it. You got to praise true. You got to worship to it. Come on. You got to experience the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life. We want it to be fresh every day. When we open our eyes and see a new day, we know that the mercies are new. So we want to praise and exalt and adore the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. For he is worthy. Come on, look to the person next to you and ask them, are you sure you're in the right place? Come on, ask them and make sure they give you an answer. Make sure they give you an answer. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, Lord, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Come on, Marlon, sing your song this morning. Shit. 
this place. Your presence is here in our midst today, God. As we stand in your presence today, God. Father, we stand humble. We stand naked and unashamed in your presence, God. We stand, oh God, as only unto you because you're the one that is deserving of all our praise and all our worship today, God. Father, as a sweet-smelling savor, let our worship reach you, God. Let it come from our bellies, God, as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. So just stay 60 seconds where you are. Lift your hands, open your mouth, and give God the best worship. Give God the best praise that he deserves. 60 seconds. Honor the Lord this morning. Honor the Lord in this house, for he's deserving of every praise. He's deserving of all the worship. He's deserving. He's deserving of it. Come on. We want to be aware of your presence, God. We want to be fully aware that your presence is with us at all times. Oh, so let us be aware. Let's be aware. Oh. the word of God. It comes at the right time. Amen. Lord, just make us aware of your presence. Just a script, portion of scripture from Isaiah 40 verse 28 to 31. Jesus. It says, do you not know? Have you not heard? The everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not weary or grow tired? His understanding is unsearchable. 
He gives strength to the weary. And the one who lacks might, come on, he increases their power. Verse 30 says, Though youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, he said, yet those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Or it says, you shall gain new strength. They were mounted up with wings as eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. This morning, we're so glad that we can soar like the eagles. We don't have to stay on the ground this morning. But we can soar high above all difficulties, above all tiredness, above all doubt, above all weakness, above all weariness. We don't have to go tired. The eagles don't get tired. They soar higher and higher and higher. That's how they gain their strength. There's nothing in their midst to stop them or stopping them from experiencing the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. Jesus. sing the chorus together. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
remain quiet in the atmosphere this morning. As God speaks, let us be obedient to the Spirit of God. You might be saying to some, just bow where you are. Just kneel where you are. Just experience the power and the presence of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's just stay in his presence for a little while. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. But sometimes what we need to do is to just thank God for his breath. Thank God for his faithfulness. Somebody this morning need to thank God for where you are at because you're exactly where God wants you to be. For somebody this morning, you are right smack in the midst of a miracle. For somebody you have been warring and praying and keeping the faith, you're on the verge of your breakthrough. I want us to understand that there's power in praise. There's nothing wrong with keeping noise in the presence of the Lord. We don't be shouting because it sounds pretty, but we shout because we want to disturb the enemy. Because as long as you are a worshiper, the enemy would want to stop you from worshiping the Lord. I need somebody to, out of your nature, we say, oh, I'm... I'm quiet like that, but I want you to let the enemy know who is in control this morning. Open your mouths. And I need believers to start to shout. Now, this is an order from the commander. I need for you to shout. You're not shouting because you're making empty noise, but you are shouting because God is faithful. Come on. Somebody lift your hands. Why? Because in the midst of whatever the enemy has been seeking to mess you up with, you can open your mouths and shout, Hallelujah! For God, we understand that without you, we are nothing. Jesus. This is the air. Literally, saints, come on. This is the air. Come on now, saints. Your holy presence. Saints, that is who we are. Come on, it says. Living. Whatever it is now. Understand you've got that power. This is my. In the midst of your valley, say, this is, this is my daily bread. Hallelujah, Jesus. Your very word. In the midst of your valley this morning, say, spoken <laughs> to me and I. Before you. you see what you mean is that in the midst of whatever is happening, you're going to give it praise. Say, and I tell him, I'm lost without you. This is the end. Say, this is the air I breathe. Come on, 
Don't let the devil know he's a liar. God got this. That's why you say, this is the this morning. Lift your hands and say, hey. Hey. I'm lost without you. Hey. Let's, let's do this from the top. This is the end. Sing, sing. Come on. I want you as you sing to understand what you're singing this morning. This is the the Bible says that the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. That's right. Right where you are, His living. Hey. Every day we can testify this is. This is our daily bread. Every single day. The living word. Come on, say. Thank God I am. And I am lost without you. One more time. Let's say it again. Oh, I'm so desperate for you, Lord. Hey. And I am desperate for you. I want you to lift both your hands to heaven towards heaven this morning. Because understand that worship is participatory. What is that word? Participatory. Thinks that's the word. And sometimes because of what we are going through, we refuse to lift our hands or because the pressures of life are weighing us down. But let me let you know that when you are able to lift your hands, not when everything is going good, but in the midst of whatever you are being challenged with, when you are able to lift your hands, you know what you are saying? You're saying, devil, I don't care what you bring. I understand that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Right now, I might be a bit perplexed, uh, but devil, I'm going to give God praise for I know that I'm not destroyed. I need somebody to start to give God praise like you never, never did before. Come on, give God praise. Don't wait on a song. Don't wait on a song. Hallelujah. How many of you know that there's nothing too hard for God today? How many of you believe that in the midst of whatever comes our way, God got this? If that is your belief this morning, I want you to clap unto the Lord. The Bible says that we should shout unto the Lord. I need somebody to shout. Come on. Come on. Got the song? Hallelujah. Tell IT. We're going to declare something this morning. But before we do that, I want you to look over to somebody and say, I want you to join me in worshiping the Lord. I want you. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. They You're done talking. This mountain can't be moved. Get the key, get the key first. So I'll just start. Get the key. Hallelujah. 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 Listen, here, here's what I want you to do. The Bible says it is better to give than to receive. I'm going to give you 60 seconds to put your hands on somebody and bless them right now. Come on. Bless them right now. Come on, sometimes we got to touch. You know, somebody ain't get touched for the week. Don't be disobedient. Put your hands on somebody. 60 seconds. I bless you in the name of Jesus. With all the love in my heart, I bless you this morning. I bless my daughters this morning. Put up the words to me. Come on, we're going to declare this this morning. Because how many of you know that God deserves our, our, our worship? He deserves the decorations. Because when we sing the songs, put up the words for me, we are declaring things about him. They say, They say this mountain can't be moved. But they're liars, because God got this. Come on. They say these chains were never Come on now. Woo! Let me hear you. But they don't know you like Come on. Testify. Move. Testify, church. There is power. is a liar. Come on. This morning, how many believe in this morning? How many believe in this morning? Sing, hey. we know that hope is never. If you walk in here, believe in that, rebuke it right now.
How many of you this morning believe it for your miracle? It may not be everybody, but how many of you believe it for your miracle? You said it. Hear me. You said it. Because God said it, we got to believe it. Come on, say it. You said it. It is done. Whatever fear, whatever doubt is gone. Sickness, be gone. Doubt, be gone. Discouragement, be gone. against you can prosper. God touch is bigger than your circumstance. in your life saying it has been hard God but I'm believing Father the problem is pressing me down but I know that you are the God of the impossible God we believe Lord we believe for it Morning, we say we believe. Father, we believe forever. We believe forever. Jesus. If you believe for it right now, I want you to start to thank God that Effie has already delivered you. Come on. Thank God that that fear is gone. Thank God that that particular trans circumstance that you thought was immovable, that, that circumstance that you thought was too hard for God to deal with. I come against every plan of the enemy that would seek to bombard your mind this morning. Come on, we've got to believe God for it, but we've got to war for it. <laughs> we've got to open our mouths and let the devil take his place. We've got to open our mouths and let the devil know that God will not put more on me than I can bear. <laughs> You gotta be true. Make true it. Hey, it is the. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. Cause God said it is the. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. I've got the victory. God said, it is done. Put your hands, come on. I've got the victory. 
Let yourself to one more time. The unbreakable. We are believing God. God we believe. Lord, we believe in you. God, we believe for a move in the silver. Oh, that's right. Take. We'll see your miracle. Come on. God, we believe. Hey, hey. God, Sing that part again. From the impossible. From, From the impossible. Do you see, see a miracle? God, we believe. I want to say that this time. God, and I want you to sing, I'll see a miracle. Bring us out. From the impossible. I'll see a miracle. You've seen a miracle. Why? Because I believe. believe. Sing it, I make it personal. God, I believe for a miracle. From the impossible. In my circumstance. Somebody shout a hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Come on, worship the Lord. Let me get crazy this morning. Hallelujah. Come on, worship, worship, worship. Don't wait for a song. Give God praise. Let the devil know he's a liar this morning. Let the devil know that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Come on, church. Let the devil know that you know the God that you serve. Come on. I need somebody to give God a praise. I need somebody to thank God for his goodness. Come on. Let's thank God for his mercy. Don't depend on a song. A song. We are moving with a heart condition. Let's give God a praise, somebody. I say hallelujah. I say hallelujah. Isn't God good? I believe this morning we had church. I believe this morning that the spirit of the God that we serve is in this house. Oh, I can feel the richness of his presence this morning. Don't, don't, don't move out of that posture this morning of praise and worship. Saints, I'm begging you, I'm imploring you not to move out of that posture of praise and worship. I want to declare and I decree that March 5th, 2023 is Love and Light Ministries International Point of Inflection. I believe because the spirit was so rich in this house this morning and that every song that we declared was led by the spirit. Amen. And I believe that what is happening, God is saying, is a point of inflection where this church and everything attached to it shall move from glory to glory to glory to glory. March 5th. But you know what? We got to do what we know saying. We got to believe it. Amen. I don't mean Amen. to preach this morning, but the spirit is here. And you can't quench the spirit. But if we believe that today, everything that happened prior to today, I'm not taking a chance. Yesterday we had horse racing. And it was powerful when I listened to that horse, that name, it's a gamble one. <laughs> and I, I happen to be driving and hear the story of it's a gamble. The guy has so much problems getting the horse and naming the horse. And they spell the horse name wrong. They call it it's a gamble. But then he put a jockey named Samuel. <laughs> that said on it's a gamble. And won. Against the odds. Against everything. But thank God we don't have to take a gamble this morning. Because we know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We don't have, I love Samuel. He's a good jockey. No, he has six gold cups. But we have a jockey called Christ 
that wins every race. Amen. So we're not taking a gamble. We are walking in the promise and the finished words of Christ through believing. And that's why I can say this morning, Bishop, I declare over you, your latter should be greater. I prophesy it, that everything that come against this man of God was only to elevate him from one level to another level. And it is coming. It is here. And we believe it. Amen. Hallelujah. I welcome you in the spirit of God. I welcome you with the spirit that is in this house. And I want to say for that young man that I brought, Naji, I'm going to prophesy over you. You will hear his story one day. But where he came from, I came here with him this morning. I believed with him. I didn't know the song that was going to be sung. But I believe with you, Naji, that everything that you've been through, son, you will bring your ministry here. But you, you, Naji, you're going to move from one level to, to another level. The enemy will never again touch you. Amen. There's a bloodline around you. You're going to raise shirt, not by accident. That's the blood of Jesus that's upon you. Amen. I'm in that mode this morning. I'm declaring things as if they are Amen. over you, son. And I welcome you into this house and into the house of God. And like Paul, you will not go back where you were. Amen. But you will now have a Damascus experience, son. And I wait with expectancy with the entire church to see what God is going to do with you. Amen. Just Amen. believe it. So I welcome all of you this morning. I welcome my friends here. I didn't see them for a while. The Austins and family. Cora's family too, I think, Koran. I think I saw the family this morning. I welcome all of you to this house this morning. Amen. I welcome all of you. I welcome all of you, even online in our e-church this morning. I welcome you to this house. And may you continue to stay in the presence of God as I get on this morning with what God has called me to do this morning. In terms of bringing our declaration to this house, I think we are in a good mood and a good posture to release the declaration unto God because he has been good since. Has he been good? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So let's, let's raise our right hand as a source of acknowledgement to the King of Kings and to the Lord of Lords, to the one that we have given all things unto, Lord, this morning, so that you can do what you have to do, only way you do it in our lives. So as we say these words, these are not just words. These are powerful words. We say, believe it. As we say these words, believe it, saints. And just let's wait for what God is about to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father, pour your grace upon this local church. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation from your word that we may know you better than the day before. Strengthen us with power by your spirit and fill us with all your fullness and grace. Help us to see that we are one body in you, Lord and to preserve the unity of spirit in the bond of peace. Teach us to rejoice with each other, to suffer with each other, and to accept and encourage each other. Knit our hearts together in love. May we never forsake the assembly together of this local body. Every member committed to Christ, fulfilling purpose. We declare that the gates of hell shall not prevail against your universal church, and let the saints of God and the people of God amen. say amen. amen and amen. Hallelujah. You might now have your seat. But as you sit, just continue to give God all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Hallelujah. 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 As I get into this morning's announcements, I just want to, first of all, acknowledge all who are here this morning. Now, having birthdays, if you are in the sanctuary this morning celebrating a birthday or an anniversary, I ask you to stand at this time. If you're joining us via our e-church, you can also stand. Uh, are there anyone in the house celebrating a birthday? I know the bishop celebrating it from now, so he was standing. We are in May. March is close to May, so we can have a right to start now. But if there are none, I am seeing none. They are. Oh, Ruby. Oh, Ruby. Our elder is celebrating a birthday. Isn't it good when God give you long life? That you can see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. So, Ruby, this morning, we will serenade you with a happy birthday song. 
And for all you join us by e-church this morning, we also celebrate with you as you celebrate your birthday or your anniversary. So now Love and Light Ministries International Choir will serenade you. Happy birthday and may God bless you Ruby. May he get, continue to give you long life and good health as you continue to surgery in the kingdom of God. Announcements this morning. I will start with Sunday school. Sunday school continues today and every Sunday at 8.30 in the a.m. And mask wearing is optional. So Sunday school has restart is in on life platform right here at second, secondary school, St. George Secondary School at 8.30 in the a.m. They use their various rooms to have the classes and mask wearing is optional. So please, if you're listening to us online and you have children between the ages, I think is from 0 to 16, but particularly from the 3 to 16 years group, we ask you to bring your children so that they can grow up hearing the word of God. Because the word of God says when you raise up a child, in the word of God, even when he gets old, he or she shall not depart from it. So there's good ground to have your children anchored in. To all parents and guardians, today's Bible Bucks Redemption Day. The kids would be allowed to trade their Bible Bucks for assorted items and tasty treats. So just remember today's Bible Buck Day. So when you see your kids coming back with all the assorted goodies and items, you must commend them because that means they rehearse. Their memory verses well, and they would have been given books which are going to be redeemed today. So it's a great initiative by the Santa School. I think you should applaud the Santa School at this point. It, it's anchoring the Word of God into our young children's heart, and now they are being again recognized for the good work. Three to five class fun day. The three to five class fun day. The three to five class annual activity will take. The form of a fun day, and that will be next Sunday, March the 12th, 2023. Please pencil that, March 12th, next week, Sunday, the 12th, and it starts at 8.30 in the a.m. to 11.30 in the a.m. on the premises. So next Sunday, the 3 to 5 class fun day, from 8.30 in the a.m. to 11 a.m. right here at the St. George Secondary School. The children can come dress as their favorite Bible character. Many activities are planned to make this an exciting session. So for more information, please, please speak to Elder Linda Foster, the Sunday School Supervisor. And Linda's in the back. She's raising her hand. So for those who don't know Linda, she's right in the back in a white top, raising and shaking to us like the queen. So next week, Sunday, the 3 to 5 class fun day. Pray and Bible study 2023. Prayer and Bible study continues on Wednesday evening at 7.30 p.m. in this sanctuary. This Wednesday, we will have part two of our Bible study series, which continues to be led by Elder Kevin T. Paul. The topic of the series is True Harmony in the Spirit, Fellowship Revealed. True Harmony in the Spirit, Fellowship Revealed. The scriptural text for the study is 1 John 1. 1 to 7, 1 John 1, 1 to 7. Be sure to read and be ready to participate. This series continues through to the 15th, the 22nd of March 2023. And you feel free to invite a friend to this powerful study from the Word of God. So pray on Bible study and we could all agree that all the Bible studies this year was powerful. Led by the bishop, 
bringing the unity. And then we had last week truth, true harmony in the spirit, looking at fellowship. And those who were here remember some of those things. You're sharing in the participating with and the partnership with. So please come out and let's continue to be equipped and empowered and enlightened by the word of God. The radio program. Remember to tune in to the Truth for Living program on Live 97.5 FM on Thursday at 10 in the AM. That is Truth for Living program on Live 97.5 FM this Thursday and every Thursday at 10 in the AM where you'll be encouraged and enlightened through the power of God's word from our own Bishop, Bishop Mark S. Yearwood. So a radio program. Anniversary celebrations. Hallelujah. The 21st anniversary uh, contributions envelopes are available. Make sure to collect yours from the ushers and make your contributions. We are looking forward in anticipation to the powerful time on the 2nd of April, 2023. The 2nd of April, 2023, as Love and Light Ministries International celebrate not two years, not 20 years, not 12 years, but 21 years. Think that need an applause right there. It's a good place to thank God right there. The featured speaker for our conference is Dr. Paul Cannons of Living Word Fellowship, Houston, Texas, and he and his, he's also the founder of Power Walk Ministries. So we will be having Dr. Paul Cannons. Uh, he'll be fellowshipping with us here for our 21st. And I just want to say this, this week I, I heard um, the program Paul Watt Ministries, and I want to say that Lama Light Ministries is getting international exposure. I mean, the guy that advertised it, he's encouraging people from all over the globe to come. Oh, but I hope we have enough space, because God lead people to follow Dr. Cannons. Boy, we're going to have a powerful time for our 21st. So we are having international exposure. So we are believing that we are moving into our international stage here at Lama Light Ministries International. Let the saints say Amen. And March Ministry, this evening at 6.30 p.m., right here in the sanctuary. That's this evening at 6.30 in the sanctuary. The ministry will be meeting for Bible study. The theme topic of the study is made to need each other and to pray for one another. Need, made to need, made to need each other and to pray for one another. The study... Focus will be from 2 Thessalonians 1, 1 to 12, and 2 Thessalonians 2, 13 to 17. So I hope you've read already, and if you haven't, you have a little time to read. And let us all come and dive into the Word of God together. What I want to say is that God is so awesome that I found that in preparing for this, it has flowed so nicely with all that we have been taught already. With the bishop, unity, elder pile, fellowship. And now we are here in Second Thessalonians. So God's word is speaking to us this year, saints. We are also asking everyone to bring a drink, a snack. Don't forget to bring your sword, which is your Bible. Also bring your notepads and your pens, the pens and any thoughts that you might want to take with you. Hope to see all the couples there. Let's commit couples in 2023. Women of a higher calling ministry. A reminder to all ladies who did not have the opportunity to choose the number for you, for your new group, to please do so. So you can please contact Reverend Kathy Ann immediately after church so that you can choose, and you can choose that number so that you can be placed into your group. Also, on March 18, 2023, at 545 in the a.m., the ministry will be having a fellowship sunrise breakfast walk. The walk will be started in Warren's, and we'll be finishing at Bats Rock Beach, St. James. The ministry is asking you to make a small donation of $15. This will assist with the preparation of the breakfast, which will be provided. Registration forms are also available from Sister Sherry Ann Osborne or Deaconess Velda Archer. And you can also make your payments to these ladies. The walk is open to the entire church. And that is, again, on March 15th. It's just around the corner. I think that's next few days from now. So please register early. So I urge you to start to register. And if I take my mind back to the last sunrise breakfast walk that started from Warren's down to Batsra, I had a fantastic time. And don't worry about the $15. You get more, you get breakfast if you are at Champers. 
So please make your contributions and let's come out to participate in our fellowship in giving support to the women of Ohio calling. Singles coming together ministry. The ministry would like to thank Reverend Kesby or Kesby Jones. I hope I pronounce it right. Dr. Reverend Kesby Jones or Kesby. Crazy. I have to get my African tongue on today. So ministry would be like to thank Reverend Crazy Jones of Cave Hill Wesley of Wholeness Church for sharing so powerfully last Friday evening in their session. So Reverend Jones, we are indebted to you. We thank you for coming and giving the support to the singles ministry. And we thank you so much. The prayer corner. The funeral service of our dear brother Douglas Odo is on Tuesday, March the 7th, 2023 at 3 p.m. at the St. Thorum Thomas Parish Church. Our brother, dear brother Douglas Odo, I still remember seeing him sitting in front of me when we was over at the old church particularly. He has gone on to be with the Lord, so his Thanksgiving service will be on March the 7th at 3 p.m. at the St. Thomas Parish Church. Men, we are encouraged to make a special effort to attend to give our contributions to the Thanksgiving service for our dear brother Odo, who has now gone on to be with the Lord. Also continue to pray, praise, and pray for God's favor. Where your finances are concerned, pray for protection, pray for healing, pray also for peace, for comfort, for strength for the sick and individuals who have lost loved ones. Continue to remember Sister Rhonda Chase and Cheryl Thompson in prayer. Both ladies are still in the hospital. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you so very much for your patience and your attention for the foregoing notices. At this point, I would give over to my sister in Christ. Chernell Marshall, who will now be preparing us for the giving back to God's time. So I thank you this morning as we participate in this wonderful service. Thank you. Good morning to the church. Um, before I get into our announcements, we just, I mean, our offering. We want to remember our sister Cheryl, and we know recently she lost her uncle. Now her grandmother has also passed, so we want you to remember her in your prayers, and we will keep you abreast of when that funeral service will be. Brother Leroy, Elder Leroy talked about Gold Cup yesterday, and... Incidentally, that's what I wanted to share this morning because yesterday we stopped in traffic, you know, it's Gold Cup. And I was wondering what's going on. Then I remembered, yeah, Gold Cup is going on. And this traffic was all the way up by Commer, by the way, that I was in traffic. And it just stood out to me how the world supports itself and supports its own. You know, if, if there's an event, people are preparing weeks in advance, everybody's going. Parents set aside some money to send their children, you know, they can get new clothes, you know, females don't want their new clothes. Let me not say females, the males just as bad. They go and want a pair of shoes to match the pants and you know, 20 pairs of shoes they will have because they have to have a different everything. So they invest heavily in what is going on in them for what, an hour or two or three or four? No eternal value in that whatsoever. We, and I shouldn't say that, maybe there's value, as the economists will tell you, there's value in the economy. You know, money goes in, small businesses increase, yada, yada, whatever. It doesn't usually trickle down to the average man, but nonetheless, it supposedly helps the economy. Now, there is another economy that is sure. And we, the children of God, don't seem to have the same concept as the people of the world. We don't seem to invest in an economy that's eternal as we should. I really want us to start thinking and looking differently. Don't see it as just spending this money because the world doesn't think two times about, you know, just giving this money for a frivolous event that is enjoyment that they probably didn't enjoy because they probably were too drunk anyway and don't remember what happened. And I'm not only talking about Gold Cup, whether it's Kaduma or a party or a fete or whatever. They go, they have a blast, and they spend loads of money. So this morning, I want you to think about the kingdom of God. I want you to think about investing and sowing into this kingdom, into God economy. 
which is a sure economy. Which you know that you will receive pressed down, shaken together, and running over. And why do we know that? Because if he said it, we believe it, and we will believe for it. We can't just say it. So this morning, as I used to tell you, I want to put your mouth, put your money where your mouth is. We sang it. We said it. God, we believe. You said it, so we believe it. You said it, so it is done. This morning, I want us to give as unto the Lord. I want us to sow into the kingdom. I was blessed last week when we all, you know, were blessed, Sister Maria, and we were able to help her to meet a need. The next time, however, I don't want the pastor or anyone else to say, come, let us give. But I want us to willingly, individually, after church, a sister, a brother, whoever, if you know have a need, whether it's not being made public or not, you know about it, better go lay on your heart. Sometimes the person might not express a need, but God might place it on your heart to give so-and-so to this or give so-and-so that. And you will say, God, but I ain't got enough. Or God, what are you getting for? You might not know. But if God speaks to you, just step out in faith and do what God has said to do. So let us stand this morning. As we will give our offerings, we have our tithes and offering, we have our plant to seed, we have our benevolent fund, and of course, there's a contribution for the anniversary service. And let's not forget our online giving. The information is on the screen. So those of you at home who are not in the assembly with us this morning, whether you're joining with us from another nation or you're joining with us from right here at, in Barbados, you can give online as well. So this morning, people, I want us to practice sowing into the kingdom of God, giving into the kingdom of God, giving unto the work of God, not only because of what we will get out of it, but recognizing that what we do is a bigger plan is for eternal purpose. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for another day. We want to thank you for letting us to see another week. We want to thank you, Lord, for your provision, Lord God, over the past week, over the past month, Lord God. We want to thank you, Lord, for being such a faithful God. There are times, Lord God, when we do not know where the next thing will come from to meet a need, to pay a bill, to do whatever. Sometimes, Lord God, it's a medical emergency that we may have and we may worry. God, it's something important. It might be insurance. It might be a God, a mortgage, something, Lord God, but Father, we know that you will always come through for us. Father, I pray this morning that you would speak to your people. I pray, oh Lord God, that as we would have heard in Bible study, Lord God, last week, that we would have that fellowship, God, that fellowship where no one, God, goes without. We're people in the body of Christ, Lord God, meet each other's needs, God. That's your economy. That's your kingdom at work, Lord God. That's how you expect us to operate, Lord God. So, Father, this morning, I pray that your people will sow, Lord God, generously, God, into your kingdom for your work, Lord God, for your honor and for your glory, to meet their brothers and their sisters' needs, Lord God, to bring the unsaved to you, Lord God. Father, this morning, I pray your blessing upon every person that will give this morning, God. I pray as your word says, Lord God, you will return to them, Lord God, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, Lord God. Your word also, God, that he who gives generously to God would be rewarded generously, Father. So I pray that you will reward your people, God, accordingly to how they will give into your kingdom. And I pray your blessing upon each and every person, even now, in Jesus' awesome name. Amen and amen. Assurance. What a mighty God we serve. The angels by before him, heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. Let us dance and praise the Lord. Let us dance and praise the Lord. The angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. Let us dance and praise the Lord. Free, free, free. I've been set free. I have met the man, the man of Galilee. He took away.
Let us all stand and sit yet. Hallelujah. This morning we continue to give God thanks and praise for all he continues to do in our lives. And as we are about to partake this morning of the Lord's Supper, we want to continue to remain in an attitude of worship and praise unto the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's just pause for a word of prayer. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this time, Lord, that we would gather in your presence, Lord, to partake, God, of these emblems. Lord, we thank you, God, for your blood. We thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken and bruised for all of us, and we appreciate God continually. Lord, it's not that we are bruised in your body all over again, but we are, we're being reminded of what you have done for us. So God, we take this time on every first Sunday of the month to just partake. Not that we don't have, we can do it other Sundays, but Lord, or other days, you said as often as you eat and drink. But this morning, God, we want to do it together as a body. So I pray, God, that as we partake, that you would cover our lives. As we continue to walk in this Christian walk, that we would please you in everything that we say and do. We reminded God that we are living lives, that others are looking to see what we do. So as we partake this morning, God, let us just remember all you've done at the cross. And we continue to give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All who have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and have been baptized, whether you are a member here at Love and Light Ministries International or a member of another church, you are welcome to partake with us at this time. Hallelujah. And the Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, he took bread. And giving thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken on behalf of you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the bread together. Hallelujah. In the same way, he took the cup also after supping, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. As often as you drink, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake of the cup together. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And as we continue to sit in God's presence today, I pray that God will truly continue to minister to each and every one of us. At this time, we welcome our bishop of the house, Mark S. Herewood, as he comes to minister the word of God to you, and pray that God would bless him as he speaks. God bless you. Bless you wife. Praise the Lord. I want everybody to just lift your hands towards heaven right now. Every believer in the house, as I pray for you, Father, I pray it right now before I share the Father you would form a hedge of protection around your people Father I come against every distraction Father in the midst of all that people are going through I pray God that their thoughts this morning will be focused upon your word and I pray God that your word would penetrate the hearts and lives of your people and that, Father, what would happen is that we wouldn't just hear, or we wouldn't just be hearers of the word, but we would indeed be doers, Lord. Let's bless this time of worship as we break your word today. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. You may be seated, church. I'm going to be very long this morning, so hope you don't have any rice on the stove. Call it reverse psychology. So I feel like going long, if it's short. This morning, I want to encourage you, saints. And the title of my little discourse is Living in Anticipation of Jesus' Return. Living in Anticipation of Jesus' Return. I'm basing my discourse on 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 12 to 15 in the NLT. 
and it says this. Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. They work hard among you and give you spiritual guidance. Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. Verse 13, show them great respect and wholesome love because of their work. And live peacefully with each other. Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. Encourage those who are timid. Take tender care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. Verse 15. And see that no one pays back evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Look over to somebody and say, I love you with the love of the Lord. Because if I had to love you on my own strength, right, don't, don't say that part. But in this short epistle here in 1 Thessalonians, Paul had charged church planters and spiritual leaders with some heavy responsibilities. The type of motives and conduct that leaders must exemplify. What it means to function as a loving mother, a servant father, a hard laborer. Now as he closes his letter with some final instructions and exhortations, he turns to every member of the local church and puts the responsibility for church health and church peace and church unity and church growth squarely on the shoulders of each member. I want us to understand this morning the burden is the responsibility that each and every one of us must bear to make sure that our church is a loving and harmonious body. Strengthening our relationships as a family of God for God's glory as we live in anticipation of Jesus' return. How many of you look forward to Jesus' return? How many of you this morning think that you, if Christ had to burst the skies this morning, you would be happy? Some people aren't sure. But the fact that you were in here this morning and you were able to worship God, you were saying, God, I might not have been perfect. I might have made some mistakes this week. But I'm still declaring that you are Lord. If Jesus burst the sky this morning, you'll be good. Tell somebody you'll be good. But how many of us really live in expectation of that? Yes, we might. many of us will probably die before he does come. But I believe that as we travail here on earth, that we should be living in anticipation of Jesus' return. How many of you know that we have a blessed hope? A hope of Jesus' return and by extension, eternal life. But I also want to say to us this morning, you don't have to wait until you get to heaven. Right now, you are walking in eternity. Anybody believe that? You're walking in eternity. The coming of the Lord, well, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing on this this morning because the coming of the Lord changes how we live today. Or let me say this, at least it should. Because if Christ could burst the sky at any time, it means that I must be seeking to serve the Lord in spirit and in truth and by doing and responding to his word and living right for him because he could very well burst the sky in our time. How many of you recognize that there's so much stuff happening like that? Earthquakes, rumors of wars, actual wars. People's love waxing cold, even within God's church because COVID still here with us but not as dangerous as it used to be or maybe it is for some people. And yet people are still afraid. People are still, you know, pulling back. People are still not getting in and falling in line. It is vitally important to the advancement of God's kingdom on the earth to have a healthy and peaceful church. How many of you believe that? A healthy and peaceful church. And I always say to you, church, all the time, there are people who, who listen, in their, in their actions, they might be seeking to test you to see if you can fail. But they want you not to fail because they want you to show them that what you are living is real. 
Because there are many people out there who are lonely. There are people out there who are sad. There are people out there giving you a, a good face, even within God's church, and struggling. Amen. Yeah, so that is why it is important for us to have a healthy and peaceful church. It is important for us to promote body life and prevent body strife. Y'all listening to me? Write that somewhere. Lord, help me to promote body life in the church and, and not and prevent body strife. In other words, Lord, help me to be part of the solution and not the problem. We want to apologize for the little noise in the recording because we have a fan that is singing praises unto the Lord. How many of you recognize this morning that there's no perfect church? And there are some people who have been moving around and all of that and still have not found that. There's no perfect church. Not ours, not one in our island, the Caribbean, or any of them that we watch online. But hear me, what is very important though is that every church should strive to be healthy. Look over to somebody and tell them, as a member of this church, we must strive to make this church healthy. Talk to somebody. We're not talking to one another. You give the message. Every Christian should desire to be a member of a healthy church and should step up to the plate. Somebody say, step up to the plate. Not to eat the food. Not to enjoy that nice rice and stew, whatever you got on the stove, thinking about there. But step up to the plate and take responsibility. Make every effort to contribute to a healthy church. For God's glory. And in our passage, Paul gives several um, end time instructions. And that is why I, I named, I, I called the message that. Because he said to us, look, if we can get these things, or we need to get these things right. In the end times, in, in these last days, so that God's church would be more effective. So that God's church would be more powerful. How many of you know that you are powerful sitting right where you are? Why? Because you've got the power of the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Believer, I want you to see yourself, if you weren't seeing yourself as that, as a warrior. See yourself as someone who has delegated authority, who can stand up and speak to circumstances and see them change. Anybody with me? So in verses 12 and the first part of 13, it says this, Dear brothers and sisters, honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. And you know, we pastors don't like to preach these things because people start to think they're trying to promote yourself. Please hear me today that I'm speaking about leaders generally and not myself. Understand that leaders work hard among you. How many of you know that? You don't know that about me? I work hard among you. Real hard. It's just that people see me preach and that's it. They don't see me from Monday to Sunday again until I come. But there are many leaders that work hard, and I'm not talking about those who might be playing church or just about trying to make themselves gods in God's place, but, but leaders who are genuinely working hard for God's kingdom. They give spiritual guidance. Verse 13 says, Show them great respect and wholehearted love because of their work. What is our responsibility towards our spiritual leaders, church? We need to appreciate our spiritual leaders. Look over to somebody and tell them we need to appreciate our leaders. But you know what, love and light, we don't have a problem with that because we already do. Amen? Amen? Notice that Paul starts out with dear brothers and sisters, so there's no doubt that he's speaking to us as believers and not just um, the, the, uh, the Thessalonica church. He's urging. You don't see that in this translation, but the word in, in some translations, it says instead of on it, it says know your leaders. And that word there, know, is, is like Paul urging. He's, 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 he's requesting urgently to honor those who are leaders in the Lord's work. Folks, this is important. Why? Because you know that if the head bad, the whole body bad. Amen? If you do stuff to frustrate your leaders, if you are not committed to your task, if you are not doing what God has called you to do, any good leader 
would be discouraged by that, especially if he's a leader who preaches the word of God, who preaches God's truths. And so it's important that we honor the men and women of God. How? A couple of things quickly, and I go on to the next point. One thing, the first thing that we should do is give them their due. I am not here talking only about money. How many of you know sometimes a tap on your back makes you feel good? Anybody here? Sometimes somebody just speaking a good word. Pastor, you hear cut look good. <laughs> Haircut. <laughs> but it didn't hear much to cut. But, but you understand what I'm saying? Pastor, I love your smile. Pastors and elders are worthy of respect. Why? Not because of their title. Not because of their office or position. They earn respect by their labor. That is how you judge them. And I look around, I have a lot of ministers as friends, and I know for sure that many of them, almost all of them that I know work hard. They pray hard, they do Bible study, they minister. A lot of times you don't see the leaders, but when you are sleeping, they are ministering. When you are relaxing, they are running around, somebody sick, somebody lose a loved one, and I don't care who you are, when you have lost somebody, you want to at least hear, the minimum is hear your pastor. Anybody here? Sometimes because we are only human, we don't always get to everybody. But the Bible says that elders are over you in the Lord. They have been given authority and responsibility for the church. And, and here's where I, I understand how the enemy can come into churches and get a foothold. Because many times people think that they, I, I've, I've even seen this, that they can get past God's man or woman leader and go to the Lord. Especially on issues dealing with the church. So don't get me wrong, you have responsibility to go to the Lord on your own. But many times people would bypass leaders and expect to hear from the Lord. Understand that elders and elders here, we're speaking of pastors, we do have elders in our church, are over you in the Lord. And we are not talking about over you to, to abuse you or to lord anything um, over you. But you have to respect their position and, and what God has called them to do. They have been given authority and responsibility for the church. Understand the church is not a dictatorship. So I, I know that some people there are now saying, the pastor, you can tell me what you do. Tell me where you can go. That's not what I'm talking about. It is not a democracy either. There must be clear leadership, but it must be in the Lord. So it is important that we don't deflate our leaders with criticism on Jew. You know, constructive is not wrong. But encourage them with appreciation. You know, the Bible says, and all of us know this, that the shepherd knows each sheep individually. Isn't that good to know? Say thank you, Jesus. But here's what we miss. The sheep are commanded to know their shepherds as well. Don't let me be off balance. So yes, the sheep know the shepherd's voice, but the, we, we must also know our shepherds as well. So we give them the due. Secondly, we respect and value them. Respect and value them. This is my first point, so don't tell me that you number three when I get in number two. These are sub points from the main point, number one, right? The second thing is that we must respect and value them. How many of you sitting here today and God is speaking to you now and asks you, do you really respect and value your leaders? What would be your answer? I want us this morning not to dismiss the significance of their role. We need to be responsible to them, support them with loyalty and affection. And I want to say here, I want to thank you people who since 2002 have done that. You have, you have, you have valued me and my wife. You have taken care of us. You have uh, helped us to fulfill our vision. So we are happy. But sometimes you need to remind people, the slackers, the ones that sometimes think, that, oh, who's he? He ain't God. He, who is she? She ain't God. But if you have joined this church recognizing or believing that God has called us with vision to this ministry 21 years later, it is having an impact on this nation of Barbados. And I say the uttermost parts in the earth because we have had Jamaicans calling, Trinidadians all over in Pakistan. We actually supporting a church 
in Kenya. A pastor, we as a church, you, yes, have been able to send over 15 Bibles. And, and why say Bibles? Because these Bibles are now written in their native language. That is what you are doing. That is what you are doing. So we need to value this significant verse. Ver, verse 12 says, Honor those who are your leaders in the Lord's work. In the NASB it says, Recognize those who diligently labor among you. That's the question you've got to ask yourself. Are your leaders, are your pastors, your elders, are they diligently laboring among you? And if I'm honest, I have to say yes, they have been. But the command is not about identifying the pastors. It is to acknowledge them. It is to know their worth. It is to recognize their true value. The call to respect elders does not promote an honor culture that treats pastors like kings. That is not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about every five minutes you've got to be ready to cut the chair. Pastor, going to change your care. Pastor, you are a big house. I'm on another room. That's not what I'm talking about. But there must be a level of where you, you are proud of, of, of your, your, your pastor. You're, you're, you're grateful for the effort that they made, not only behind the scenes, but even within um, their everyday church. You look around and see this church set up every Sunday, many of you. And I am telling you that my wife, myself, along with many others, and my daughter um, are very much involved. Let it be OBS, SBS, whatever it is used. Every single Sunday, our cars are, 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 are full of stuff walking in this church to set up church. Every single Sunday and Wednesdays. What am I saying? You must, you must honor that. Understand that you don't have leaders and pastors who are playing church, who are just out for themselves. But you must honor, recognize their true value. I want to go by the word of God, you know, this way I share from First Thessalonians 5. Not from Mark. Here we book. This is not a personal promotion for myself, but I'm included. Folks, we must submit to our leaders' oversight. Heed their admonishment. And why I say that? If there's one thing that people can say about me over the years is that I keep enough noise for righteousness. I will literally, and I'm trying to improve, quarrel when believers are not doing the right thing. And the reason I do that is not because I, I know some people take it wrong and take it hard, but it is because I know where I was. I was on a road heading to destruction. And some 30 something years of, ago, when I recommitted my life to God, remembering what I was, had gone through for the devil, remember the kind of things that I would have done. I never smoked a herb or do nothing so. I ain't got no outside church and nothing so. But the point is, I was still a sinner. I was drinking my drinks and having my with ladies. Left that way it is. And I remember playing, and some of you have heard this before, in the tent and, and, and playing in a band. We up five nights a week. I still work in a day job. And we would have to practice sometimes so all the morning and then get up and go to work. And I did all that. And when I recommitted my life to the Lord, I said, God, if I did all of that for the devil, when I commit to you, I am going to give you even more. And that has been, that's why I can do so many things and still look so young. Because one thing that God has blessed me with over the years is that he has blessed me with good health. Despite, you know, the little paunch, well, the big paunch here. Why? Because of my faithfulness. And so what used to bother me in the early years, and probably maybe a couple months ago, is that I could not understand how God can take this pine boy and turn his whole life around. He is now standing at a pulpit and asking God's people to do the same thing and they find it difficult, some, to respond. Or they find it difficult, maybe because of the tone of the voice, to take the message and kind of ignore the messenger and his styles. And so I'm saying to us is that as leaders, we want you to value what we do. Not what we do for ourselves, but the effort that we make to break God's word so that you can be better because of it. So it says, uh, verse 13, and that you regard them very highly in love because of their work. We are to esteem elders. Esteem means it focuses on the attitude of the saints. It is a continued attitude of proper regard for the elders. This should not be half-hearted. 
as the verse says, we are to esteem them very highly. The church expresses its gratitude by loving the elders the Lord gives to them. Now look, you know, we ain't perfect. I would never stand here and say it as a leader that I've done everything correct. But I have done everything with integrity. Because sometimes people, people might be, let's say a smoke in and come into church. And they don't know that don't happen in our church. I'm just using an example. And you come and because the Bible, you, you're doing a passage, the Bible says, Thou shalt not smoke in the house of God. Not that any Bible. But instead of saying, Well, you know something, yes, Lord, help me with this cigarette thing. You say to yourself, yeah, somebody tell you something. He went and prepared a message for me. Those that know me know, why would I go and pick out Leroy or, or, or Elder Palm and decide I can preach a message on them? But if I am going through the word of God and something comes up, that you must not commit adultery. But because you know somebody committing adultery, I ain't supposed to say, no, I'm, I have more regard for your leaders than that. Never believe. I, don't, I can testify here. I do not go home and do that. However, if there is a particular situation existing in our church, then I take responsibility to find God's word first to address it as a corporate body. And if it doesn't change, then I would have to do what? Address it individually. Are you with me? But sometimes in church, people don't like leaders like that because leaders like me make you feel uncomfortable. And you have to because the only way you're going to be feeling uncomfortable is if there's something inside of you as the word go forth that knocks you. That, 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 that look like the pastor pulling you down. That says to me that you have to know that there's something wrong. And that is where you should get together and deal with, it with the Lord. So hold this in, in Philistine for us. In spite of our limitations, God's spiritual leaders should be respected and obeyed unless it can be clearly seen that they're out of God's will. I do in ignorance. I come here and tell you that now I have three wives with my wife. Something wrong. I tell you straight. I go on mad. Run. In verses 14 and 15 we read, Brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy. So we're going off the leaders now. Watch this. Encourage those who are timid. T tend the care of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. 15. See that no one pays by evil for evil, but always try to do good to each other and to all people. Now, these verses record a new set of exhortations. Paul has now moved from talking about esteeming and valuing the leaders, and now he, in addressing the same audience, brothers and sisters, but I want you to notice in those verses that the focus shifts. Read it for yourself. It was all about the leaders just now. So you always got to get the head right. Cut the head right, the body be all right. Amen? But watch this now. Verses 12 to 16 is the members' duty to the elders. But verses 14 and 15 is related now to the duties of the members of the church to one another. Look over to somebody and say, those verses speaking to you and I. Folks, what we see here in these verses is that they're all about caring for each other in the household of faith under various circumstances. Look, one of the things that we've got to realize as believers, right? Let me accept this. None of us are perfect. We thank God for the Holy Spirit. But the Bible is clear. The spirit and the, 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 the flesh is constantly at war. Do you understand why? Because the devil don't mean you no good. Look over to somebody, the devil. Like, listen, you are committed. The devil coming for you. There are some of you sitting down and you're wondering, I'm afraid of this. I'm afraid to step out. I don't want to do the next thing. Oh, Lord, I'm too, that's too big for me. Lord, I don't know if you call me to that. Listen to me. When God, I have been in so many different ministries as a, as a man in, in church. And I felt God's life, uh, I've called on my life some years after I committed my life to the Lord. They take me real years. Real years before I fulfilled that. But you know what I did? I got involved in ministry. I got involved in worship. I got involved in Sunday school. I, I would preach sometimes. I got involved in God's work and supported another pastor. Right? 
But what that was all about, saints, was training for reigning. I even asked God, God opened a door for me to go to university. And then I went to, to, to do a, a diploma in, in management. And I said, but God, you call me to a pastor. Okay, you open all these doors. And we was promised traveling all over the world and all these things, all the Caribbean and Canada and so on. And I said, but Lord, how now? And I got in there and I got the diploma and so on. And I can understand. I said, but God, you, I, I hear pastoring. Where you got me? But do you know that because of that diploma, when I started church up to this very day, I have been able to properly handle the accounts of Love Light Ministries. You understand what I'm telling you? I say met properly. So much so that we got officially, we decided we would get somebody. You know, in those days, we didn't have any money. 40 members, I ain't going to pay accountant money and they got to eat. So I had to be an accountant. I started the church and I had to be the worship leader. I had to train all of them that you see, most of them, I had to train myself. Thankfully, we had somebody come in and train our churches. And today, I believe they're second to none of our hospitality. I care about you here. I go up places and my skin crawls. I say, whoa, if this that, me, this will never happen, right? Shouldn't be doing that, but that's what I do. Because I see it. And I don't have to see things out of place. I, I'm, I'm torn down a lot, but now, so I accept a lot of things now. But in those early days, I, didn't, I, I was about excellence for Jesus, right? Still am. But what I'm saying to us is that you, you can't wait to when that perfect thing come along. You've got to trust God. The Bible says that if you are fearful with a little bit, God will do what? Give you more. And so some of I can't do this. I believe God wants me to be a prayer warrior, but I take nobody. I can't pray well. No. Step out in faith and pray. God called me to worship you, but you know I don't sing it, but I don't do it, but I got the confidence. Ask God to give you the confidence. Are you with me this morning? So they're talking here about us dealing with one another now. So let's get to that because I want to get to that. I want to say to you this morning that caring for one another is more urgent than honoring spiritual leadership. That is why it grieves me when pastors start to say, I've heard pastors declare, well, by two years' time, I shall be driving the, the biggest and best car in Barbados or wherever island it is. I must have four or five apartments because I know the church. People listen. I want us not to focus. Yes, the leadership is good, but we have to work among ourselves well. The urgency is based on needs around us. Verse 14 says, brothers and sisters, as I go ahead, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid. So I get here and tell people that, no, no, let me get it right. Yes, uh, brothers and sisters, we urge you to warn those who are lazy, encourage those who are timid. But I realize that human beings don't seem to like for the boy to tell them anything. You experience that, husband? <laughs> that was for the man just to get that piece. But ladies... You experience that? You can hear them? Powerful. But you notice the fattest smile. <laughs> the lady said, yeah! Powerful. T tend to care, though, of those who are weak. Be patient with everyone. This verse gives four ways to care for others in the church. Let me get real quick. Warn those who are lazy. Now, in the NASB, another version, it says, admonish the unruly. Now, over the years, I've found... Pastors have found a lot of unruly people in God's church. Unruly to the point where that it's, like a, it's, like a, it's, like a, it's like a club. There, there, there are some people in God's church so unruly. They love where, where you can pull down a leader. They love where you can talk bad about somebody. They love to be in the criticism corner or the grumbling corner. So the Bible says, not my, the Bible, let me make it clear. Admonish the unruly. Another word for there, another word as I, as I check the other uh, Bible thing, it means idle. Too many believers come to church and think that I, I, this is for me, so they don't sing their songs. Church was work. Listen, I, I, there was some programmers, the sister, and the, the pastor was saying that there are people who criticize. He was actually giving a story, I can't remember where he saw it. But this woman would go home every single day and say, Oh Lord, worship team, where were songs to sing, and this thing, and the next fellow was telling this story. And everything bad about the church. So one day she was saying, But son, how come that you wouldn't come and go to church with me? And here's what the son said. He said, Well, Mom, we just saw a report you was bring back home about your church. Well, him at the sense of going there. Will you come home, complain about every single thing? And you know he's go home and talk and don't know your church and listening. <laughs> Everyone here, son. It's for them, young people. Tell me, say, I wonder what dead boy. Yeah, here, mommy. Up there, man. There's a pastor, man. She can't. You don't for about half an hour, boy. Yeah, no, you know that. You about you listen. 
you don't know because you say, you say enter it. You're right there going down. And the children say, wow. Some children born enough say, but mommy, daddy, you can't say so, man. And so that's what we have. A lot of unruly people. People that want to belong to something and still want to belong to the clique. You can belong to your quote-unquote clique. There's nothing wrong with that. It's only clique or, or get bad when you start to pull down the same thing that you belong to. But that's like me getting every morning. This finger hurt me, cut it off. I ain't taking the pain and running it through the spear, cut off the other one. When then you don't got know how to shake out the body with. You all understand what I'm saying? I'm trying to be practical here this morning. Because we ain't got the time to play. We must be living in what? In anticipation of Jesus' return. And that means that you might dead before he come. So you have got to seek to empty yourself. Everything that God has called you to. Some of you know what I'm talking about. Some of you know he's know talking to you. Get over that spirit of fear. Step out and let the devil know. Even if this is for me, I can try it till I find out what for me. Four people say amen. These unruly ones or these idle ones or these lazy ones, the Bible says, are spiritually missing in action. They turn up to every church service. They pay the tithes. But let me tell you something, as much as I just advocate that you got to pay tithes because we got to pay bills. If you're paying all the tithes in the world and you are not fulfilling what God has called you to do, you're in trouble. Because if you could buy God's favor with money, I'd be in trouble because many of them have got more of me. But it is all about standing before God and hearing God say, well done. Look, you run up, you step out in faith, but look what I do to you, look. You're frightened, but look how many lives you're touching right now. Oh, you didn't think it was for you, but hey, look what God has done. That is what it's all about, man. Right? And it, it surprised me in many churches, 21 years later after, people still didn't know what God wanted to do. Say wrong with that theology. Unruly. The church is to, is to warn the lazy what I've been trying to do for years, admonish the idol. This is the word, not me. Verse 12 says that the elders are to admonish the saints. But I want to say to you, it is not the, the leader's job alone. We are to admonish one another. And here's where the problem is. Sometimes you want the friendship more than what God tell you to say. So we we'll do. But if I tell she, look, she, that, she shouldn't say that. She, he, he shouldn't say it so. Look, they should try and get church early. You, you don't, my listen, my, well, well, you, well, you, you don't pay you. Come to church early, well, well, that's your job. So what happens is that instead of, of us telling your friends the truth, and they got many that don't, they like me at first, but I like to speak the truth because the Bible says that the truth will set you free. And the person that you are ministering to, too, but sometimes we value the friendship so much. We want to belong so much that we compromise our position relative to the word of God. Unruly. Unruly. We must learn, don't leave it to the job of the pastor. Tell your children, tell your best friend, I got some friends, if I ain't doing it right, they tell me. I don't like it, I just try my best to change. That's why I preach so nice these days. Because I've taken instruction. Pastor, don't beat up your people publicly so I can beat you all up at, at um, family meeting. But these messages are to encourage. So I've had some tough times with some people, but they, were, they, were, they loved me enough to take my little, you know, not little, so I my big abuse. Love me enough to still embrace me and say, Pastor, I accept your apology. I understand you. I understand your frustrations because I know you destroy hard. I know you just give up your best. But you got here and say it. And I've taken those people to, to think. So, but we have a responsibility to each other. Right? You imagine, you're going to stand before the Lord. But how come um, John was your friend or John was your friend and you never told them X, Y, and Z? All because you value the friendship more. And if, I believe that if you value a friendship with somebody, you should be honest. You should be able to tell them, I love, I ain't brain, I miss to pull you down, right? But you got to stop your foolishness. Don't, don't come to me with a gossip. You got the truth, then we're going to talk to anybody first. Fra fear, so fear. You know what you do that? Most people, they ain't going nowhere. They ain't going nowhere, boy. Frightened for the confrontation, but they're glad that they got some boy to, to get that little thing off the chest. And I know people have hurt you, and know, sometimes you got to talk to other people about your hurt. But it's better to deal with the fear, so fear. See, that's another message. So watch this here now. Colossians uh, 3, um, 16 says this. Let the message about Christ... Watch this, in all its richness, fill your lives. I want to say that again. Let the message of, about Christ in all its what? Richness fill your lives. Because you can imagine if that is happening with me, 
and you're my friend and you're doing something wrong, I got to tell you. And as a father of this house, I maybe would have gone overboard, but every time I see foolishness and so on, I want to let my children know that they need to do right. But I'm realizing 21 years later that I don't have children anymore. I have adults. And so far, that is why I say everybody now responsible for working out their own salvation with fear and trembling. He says this as we move on in 16. Teach and counsel each other. How you can do that? You can do that WhatsApp all the time when you don't even check in your WhatsApp. I don't do WhatsApp. We got to come together. Teach and counsel each other with all what? The wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful heart. Folks, when we come here and do worship, that is important for each and every one of us, right? You as the giver, and sometimes some people will be the takers. Next service, you might be the giver and the body the taker, etc. Encourage those who are timid or faint-hearted, it says. This speaks to the spiritual condition of one who is depressed, discouraged, and despondent. Many times people are serving God. People are doing right by God, but they still struggle with depression. They still have circumstances in their lives, in their jobs, in their home, which brings some mental distress to them. Since we are to be on our P's and Q's and be there ready, ready to encourage the timid or the faint-hearted. Are you with me this morning? They should not be left out alone in, in that condition. We must not rebuke or despise them, but instead comfort, encourage, and assure them. Because in our family, we can got some trouble tree. And in our family, our church family, we're going to have some black sheep. And I say a black sheep not to be, you know, black and white, no difference. All we see them, seeing red blood coming through us. But black in the sense that they're struggling with stuff. And we have come to uh, a church sometimes to tell people, oh, they don't, don't speak. Um, uh, there's power in the tongue. Don't speak. My listen, if you're depressed, speak it. It is calling, confessing it, so that now you can do what? Deal with it. When you hide it, you can't deal with it. And that's what the enemy like. How you way good? I you get back in the car. Oh, God, I got to go out of the house now. Oh, Lord, the boy now is just killing me. God, I let to kill myself. No, confess it. I'm not good. But I'm believing that God is able to help. Come on. I, 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 right now the devil is bombarding my mind. But I believe that God has said that no weapon formed against me. He says, look, he's able to form a hedge around me. They're going to confess it. We got to say, I'm good. You lie. You ain't good. But you know what? It can't happen because we are no one another. That be urgent uh, for those who listen overseas. <laughs> you know the Africans I think do their dialect. I don't hear the boy complain. I think talk the beige, you know you, you're talking beige. So let me get back to the proper English. The reason why sometimes we can't help the depressed and the one because they're not comfortable with us. Because we don't come together enough on Wednesday night, so let us pray together so somebody connect with you in a little five, five, side, five a side prayer group and you realize that they've got a similar problem to you. I saw all people here, you know, the pastors want you to come church. I want you to come church. As a message of Bible study Wednesday, we want you, if you're in partnership, to participate. Hmm? If you're in partnership with God's church, you've got to do what is required. It ain't easy. You're going to come from your job on Wednesday. Look, I got some guys... One man said, Lucy, next, he job is on the road. Come up here on a Wednesday night and sat at this church. I would be frightened that one, one Wednesday the city deserve it. Listen, they come away, can't blame them. Nobody don't see that. But what I'm saying is, they have families, they got to drive far, them is work too. But yeah, people want me to know, they're not wrong with the Bible says that you can rest. The Bible says you should get some rest every Wednesday. Folks, if we are going to help the weak, we're talking about the sick and the ill. That we're trying to get by our visitation. We have an aging population here in this church now, right? Some of us were 20 before, 40 before. We are aging, so we can expect some deaths and so on. So you're saying, oh, the spirit of death. The spirit of death, we're thank God you got dead. I mean, you have to die. Four people die. Oh, oh we have a spirit of death. You got to die. There's a Christian, yet God are dead. Die for the poor God. But folks, that's why we got to see church different. And the Kevin started hip Wednesday night. We got we to rise and shine. We got to understand this world is not about us. 
we will enjoy some of it. Thank God. I thank God for my wife. I thank God. I got a little two by two up the road. That I got some friends to come and play some cards with me sometimes. That I know the last time they went, but they're coming to do so. And we sit down and talk a little bit. I saw one of the call and invite one to sell by me too. Just bring Sandy, bring a drink. Just call me and tell me what you want. Ask me what you want. You with me? But folks, if you're going to minister like this is saying, we got to be together, we got to be around. And yes, everybody in a terrible one place, but you know, somebody might got a couple of friends that go together, but let it be good, let it be wholesome, let it be when you're together, my prayer about your church. Yes, and there's nothing wrong with discussing a problem in your church, but don't get it, oh, well, I know them, and I from them. No, we have a situation, let's pray and believe God. Let's believe God. We ain't talking at all. You know what it means? Hush him up. Let me go in the road. Father, in the name of Jesus. Now we go in the room. I'm the hero. I'm going to be an eight, seven, the hero level. Here we go. I'm going to day. Somebody else coming to tell me the church. I know. And that boy say, yeah, 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 yeah. Because them had a problem with the pastor last week. We being real here or not? Romans 14, 1 calls, it calls what we are talking about. There are those who are weak in the faith. They want to serve the Lord. They just said, you want to serve the Lord, but boy, everything in the world is still holding them. They used to smoke a little herb. They still find themselves slipping back, right? The, 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 I like what they're slipping back in that other thing. Left out it is. So 15, Romans 15, 1 says this. And, and sometimes we read the Bible and we rush. But here Romans 15, 1 in relation to what he was telling you about helping the weak, the fear hardened. It says, we who are strong, We who are strong. A couple of Wednesday nights ago, we, we had a, a, a prayer service. We had a service here, and I asked the church. I said to my prayer, I asked something else planned, and I said to the church, for all of you who are going through something right now, some pressure, we had about 60, 60 something people here. When I tell the people who have an issue come to the, to, the, to the middle of the church, almost the whole church was in the middle. It was a bachelor than people. You weren't people that were living in sin, but that had the pressures of life. And yet, on the outskirts, there were about 10 of us who didn't go in the middle. And I said to them, you who are strong, reach forth your hands to these individuals. And here's the next thing that I want to encourage you to do, which we did on that Wednesday. When you have a need, don't wait for nobody to pray for you when they call you out. Open your mouth and start to give God praise for the answer. Come on. When you come into there for prayer, yes, you want the support. And what I did, I encourage everybody to pray and shout out to God and give God prayers for themselves. I don't know how many can come and testify the victory that they had. So what I'm saying is, Romans 5 said this for us, we got to stop thinking about ourselves. There's not a we thing. I tell you already, even Lorenzo had Tonto. He says, we who are strong have an obligation. Somebody say, I have an obligation. To bear with the feelings of the weak and not to pledge, not to not to pleasure ourselves. You know, we pleasure ourselves by judging people. Look at them. Well, when that then steals are the stronger than that. How that body could go back and do the same thing. But then they like to the save for truth. And the first time you get into your problem, you run into God and ask for forgiveness. You think God hear you a lie. But ask forgiveness for judging first. So don't judge, don't criticize, or reject the weak. Help them. No, don't get me wrong. It doesn't mean, don't forget what we talked about first, that you don't admonish them. Because if every time we pray for you, and we, you ask forgiveness for the Lord, you live for a few months and go back and do the same thing, and they do the same thing, say, ain't going to be wrong with your heart condition. There's no more prayer now. We're going to sit down with you and admonish you. That's what the Bible says, not me. Right? We must be patient with everyone. This closing exhortation refers to the idol, the fear, idol, and the weak that I previously mentioned. To admonish the idol, encourage the fear, idol, and help the weak, we must be patient with them all. And here's something I want to burst your bubble with. Patience, we mix this all the time. Patience is not perseverance in difficult circumstances. I want to repeat that. This is my view. Patience is, n is not perseverance in difficult circumstances. You want to know what patience is all about? I read it in this sentence. Patience 
is long suffering with difficult people. That is the true essence of patience. Because when people rub you wrong, it's only me. It takes real patience to embrace them. It takes patience to wait to see their lives turned around. But let me let you know, ask God for more patience because some people are real difficult to turn around. Some of you husbands and wives know what I'm talking about. Here the words, yeah, one or two. Hate to submit. Stubborn. But aren't we glad that patience is one of the fruit of the Holy Spirit? Listen to me. The Lord does not implant patience while we are asleep. He cultivates patience through people who get on our nerves. How many of you can testify with your own family members or even with your husband or your wife? There's something that they do. You've been married for 30 years this year. There's something that they do. When people get the mug, them can testify, testify now. That don't care how you think it's still there. You got to be patient. And still love. Patient. And still press on. Not get impatient. I know 30 years now. And I think, no, 30 years I know her. And she knows me. I'm sure she would tell you that she has to be patient with me many times. But it is cultivated when you get what? Stresses, people, circumstances. Now, now no wonder in, in 1 Corinthians 4, we hear that love is patient. We are to be patient with troubled people who are hard to love. Verse 14 addresses our corporate responsibility to one another. Verse 15, however, gets personal. Here's what it says. Back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 15. It's personal now. That's a 15, but you're wrong. Chapter 5, verse 15. See that no one pays back evil for evil. See. I can tell what I see mean shortly. But always try to do good to each other and to what all people. Folks, it means that we're all people. Now, neighbor, two don't do all people. That people sitting down behind you, or on the other side, they sit on the other side because them, on that side, them too. This verse gives a negative and a positive exhortation for dealing with troublemakers. Here's, the, here's what we must do. And this is one of the hardest things for all of us, but especially. For the ladies. We are to refuse to retaliate. I was only teasing ladies. We got some ignorant men too. The verb see here presents our mutual responsibility to keep one another from repairing evil from evil. So if you got a friend and the friend telling you, listen, I'm ready to lick out he I or lick out she I, you have got to say, stop it! As a believer, that is not the way to go. Are you all with me? Tell somebody I got a responsibility to you and you got a responsibility to me, man. Talk to somebody. Make it practical. Wake up somebody, man. That's how we got to get, folks. Because our naturalness, when somebody heard us, I don't know about you, I just put on a I call my defense armor. Let me tell you, I put down my foot and I going down the road. Especially 10 or so years ago. What I've learned now to do, I have a remedy. Well, I, somebody said, not, I, I changed. I have a remedy. You know what I do now? I talk to myself. Boy, let me tell you, saying, you got to thank God for Jesus. Because the mark here with the 10 years ago, God, you would be so ashamed of me. But I'm glad through the power of the Holy Spirit that I can speak to you, God. But God, you know how it would land this. God, you know it would probably want to go down the gutter. But Father, help me to count to a thousand. God, give me some, some Spanish. Give me something. Give me some tongues. Anybody with me? But let me tell you, that's victory. Because in the midst of the flesh rearing its head, because you have so much spirit in you, you automatically revert to the spirit. Come on, somebody. Not a thing wrong with that. 
Because when the temptation comes, because you are so strong in the things of the spirit, you but you let money be standing, you hold teeth mark down inside the ring. So that God's name be glorified. Somebody say amen. You think Mark Copper's Mark the signs of a wife go for a penny, she has a tree window? Well, Kathy can't pet me, she has a row me tree front door. <laughs> we are to refuse to retaliate. The verb C in that thing there, right? It, it presents all mutual responsibility to keep one another from repairing evil with evil. Christian people sometimes do evil things to one another. Amen? Let me show you what's evil things. You don't kill nobody with a knife, but you kill them with your tongue. You get to your clique and everybody, you, everybody, you clique right, all the rest wrong. You become the professional, you become the professional hit man or hit woman in that group. As you hear something, what's up running? As you hear something, let me meet. You can be that chef and all you talk about. You become the, you use the, use the, use the, use the large secret agent. Sometimes you have some key positions and you bring out information. If you're guilty, say amen. You want to say amen, what about you? You want to say, Lord, help me. <laughs> Understand the spirit of revenge have no place in a believer's life. And I want to share Romans 12 with you. I bring this in the cloth. Romans 12, 90 to 20 says this. And I leave it for you and pray that you, it will catch you. I ain't going to preach through it. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back. Trust God for it, says the Lord. Verse 20, instead, if your enemies are hungry, check how Christianity works, how hard this thing is. We'll take it easy. Somebody that here is able to feed them, we will. What are you feeding them with? I ain't calling that. That's what you're using. Are we going to feed them with? You might feed them for true. But instead of the hungry, feed them. Not to kill them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. The Bible says, in doing so, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Don't let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. You all with me this morning? Listen to me. When people pursue us to do us harm, let me run them down and pursue them to do good. Are you with me? How many of you can testify that you're in situations where people are messing with you and you find a way God opened the door to do something good for them and you did it? I had a boss with me. He could never, I guess he saw me because he come and found me there and everything he taught. Every time he gave a suggestion, they want to usurp his authority. And he was traveling and I came to the airport. I can't remember traveling now. And I, I was coming through the airport. I said, you know what? He likes to drink tea. So I'm going to buy a cup for him. And the cup had a nice little spoon through the handle, right? So you had the cup, and in the handle, you got your spoon. It was, a, it was a multi. So you could take out your spoon. And the guy, what blessed my heart, gave me all the stress, you know, I still take the cup, but yeah, take it here. But he took it, and I was so blessed a morning in the meeting. He walked in to the office, to the meeting, and he had my, the cup I give him with the spoon. I wanted to tell everybody, but I said, can't do that, get him out. And he left where we were working. Got an upgrade and so on in his job. You know that same man I, I would have shared with you all signs would give me a lot of stress. He would call. Check how God is working on. He would call and check up on me to find out how I was doing. That reason to give God praise down about me though when I when I can say hallelujah to the Lord. What it says is that when when they're doing the bad, find some little ways. You know, I'm going to buy a pen for $15, buy a pen for $15 and tie it up, go with a carrot and give them. It is not the value, it's the thought. Right? Don't fight me. Don't be too fighting. God just as bad as everybody know. There was a little other story within my workplace. I tell which one. And it seems that everybody, everything I tell the people, Max poured at me, gave me things. I thought you were responsible with it. I have come a couple of years now since we've gone back up from, from COVID that now I'm everybody's best friend. Everybody knows seeing what I had to say. Everybody now calling on me to help them with the things that they thought that oh, I wasn't doing and that they could have done. And, 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 and a, a little shame because um, one particular boss said, but I can't keep calling you because we can't even pay. I said, listen, there's no problem. I can do it for you. I'm going to do it for you because I don't want the students to suffer. I can do it for you. Right? And I did it. The reason is that is what 
What's that you say, Pastor? That is what you have to do. Right? Not a saint ain't getting, but they do it right to God's glory. You know what I mean? Anytime you know them get a problem and think, they can find me. Not because as bad as everybody, but because they know that I live for Jesus Christ. Are you with me? I want to close this little discourse. Um, and you notice it wasn't short. I doubt it wasn't going to be short. I want to close this discourse because we talked about the leaders and valuing them, esteeming them, all of this thing. We talked about how we should deal with one another. But folks, the engine to all of this, how we are going to be able to do the things that I just spoke about, I want to bring your attention to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 to 22. And then I go on. In these verses, you find seven strong exhortations that are to govern our behavior, not the leaders, not among ourselves, but our behavior now where God is concerned. Tell somebody for me, in order to do the aforementioned things, our relationship with God has to be solid. Tell somebody, our relationship with God has to be solid. Our relationship with God has to be the foundation. Although this coming last, we folk this, we will be lost towards the other things. Watch this. Here are the seven. I want to count and see if I can find them. Always be joyful. How many of you are always joyful? Miserable. God bad this and there. Let me tell you something. That's all right. But you know what we got to do? We get to that? Hey, I don't feel it. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. You know what? Skin your teeth. You release that in the atmosphere and the devil start to do what? He has to loosen his grip. Never stop praying. Did you hear what the Bible is saying, folks? Prayer changes things. There's a whole sermon, but I ain't going to preach through it because I know you got some lovely pork chops and home. Somebody, if you have, please call me. I'll pass for one. Verse 18, be thankful in all. Listen, did it say be thankful in the pocket full? Huh? Did, did it say be thankful in everybody world like you? Huh? Did, 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 did it say be thankful because as you open your mouth, glory to what? This is flying off of heaven again immediately. No, it says to do what? Be thankful in all circumstances. Why? For this is God's will for you who belong. You can imagine that. Be joyful in all circumstances because it is God's will for you. Tell somebody this, series, this Christianity is serious here. Yeah? You're in the midst of a sickness. You're in the midst of a financial crisis. And, and the Bible says to be joyful in all circumstances. Doesn't mean you want to skin your mouth. It means that you, you, you're going to take out the pen and try to get two and two to come out to six. But what you're also going to do, God, in the midst of it, I'm not going to curse you. God, I'm not going to ask you why me. Mm -mm. God, thy will be done. <laughs> oh, still bread. oh, God. That's all right. It is the joy of the Lord understanding who he is, understanding that he's never, he promised never to leave you nor forsake you. Verse 19, do not, do not, do not stifle, can't even see the word here, could not, do not stifle the Holy Spirit. Folks, when you grumbling, when you back talking, when you gossiping, you are grieving the Holy Spirit. And let me let you know that you can be gossiping with the truth. Kirby said, when I'm telling a lie, well, yeah, she do such a... I said, did you tell the person? No, not me, boy. But you're telling somebody else. You want to understand what I'm saying? The truth, you can speak the truth in love, but you got to speak the truth to the body that gave you trouble first. That way you're free to speak it to anybody. Are you with me? When I come, King, do not scoff at prophecies. I wonder why that drops drop in there because sometimes we hear things and we, oh, this body thing, oh, because that's Miss Kara, because it's Mark, them and the prophets. Listen, do not scoff at prophecy, but... Here's what you always tell people. But test everything that is said. We can test it according to you, you friend that believe in our body. Hey, turn on TV and look, check somebody up in South Africa up in some bush. You got a big church up there near Hunger, hang like home. And you go going across out there with Africa near will probably be something different. Hunger bongo something. Right? Look at what he's doing. And, 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 and that same pastor got people bent, bent over and he's standing up in the back. That's the pastor telling people to roll up on the belly and eat grass. And you telling me to watch that? When they look at the word of God, they don't see nothing like that. The spirit don't move so. Test. Because we don't want to choke the baby with the bath water. Uh, but test everything that is said. Hold on to this here. No, check, check the next one. Hold on to what is good. The gossiping and the grumbling and all them things. Man, try to get with your life. You know it ain't easy. 
Because that's who we are. I like the thought. And uh, lastly, stay away from, not some, stay away from every kind of evil. And how you know the kind of evil the Bible talking about? It's right there. Go and read it. We talk about some of them. Read it. Google all the evil in the Bible and all the verses they come up for you. Google it. And I close with these verses. Or this verse. Galatians 6.10 Therefore, I pray you hear me this morning, living in anticipation of Jesus' return. Galatians 6.10 6, Therefore, whenever you have the opportunity, believer, we should do good to everyone. Notice that the Bible did not put a full stop there, saints. I tell you people already, you know, we have, listen, as a member of this local assembly, as a member of the universal church, we have a responsibility to each other. Listen, look over to somebody and tell them for me right now. I have responsibility for you, and you got responsibility for me. Tell somebody now. One more time. See, forget already. I have responsibility to you. Watch this. The word of God, let it speak. Especially, whatever, whenever you have an opportunity, you should do good to everyone. We are left out the body outside there. But especially to those in the family of faith. You better love me and I better love you. Not we are walking in disobedience. Folks, I always tell people, right? When we were, when we were 40 people strong, we were, we were more effective financially, spiritually, and everything. We got 89 strong. And let me tell you, those 89 people used to mess up the devil. We grew to about 250-something people and lost some of our effectiveness. I'm thankful that it has nothing to do with numbers. It is all about us making ourselves available to be used of the Lord. Saints of God, enough said. Let us therefore live in anticipation of Jesus' return. For remember, when there's no hope for the future, there's no power for the present. Close your eyes with me this morning. I need every believer in the house to stand today as I pray for you. That you would live in anticipation of Jesus' return. Father, this morning as the believers stand before you. We pray, God, that the exhortations in these scriptures today would allow us to value our leaders. Don't wait till when they're dead and all the fancy tears by the grave and all the comments, hey, Pastor Mark, they hear that, but it never happened. And hey, Pastor Mark, it'll stick up for early time. And Pastor Mark would tell you as it is. But Father, I pray that we would seek to value our leaders, to seek God, to be obedient to you as we are obedient to them. Father, I pray that we will continue to respect and lift up our leaders because there are leaders above me, so I have to lift them up too. And so, Father God, I pray that you will give us patience with one another because part of this exhortation this morning was that we have a responsibility to look out for each other, God. I pray that we will be there for the weak. Father, as a strong, we will continue to lift up the weak and the timid and the faint-hearted, God. Father, I pray that we would not render evil for evil, but God, we would look to you and break every spirit of revenge that might seek to attach itself to us as believers. Loose and set free. Father, we pray today that, Lord, we would seek always to be people that are always joyful. Father, we will seek to be people that will always, will always be praying. Father, help us to be thankful in all circumstances, God, because as we heard in those last verses, God, that this is your will for us who belong to you. Help us to understand, Father, that in the midst of all that is happening and the trials, they're not there to kill us, but they're there to strengthen us. Father, they're there to draw us closer together as a family. 
So that God, when I share my experiences and my sister and brother share their experiences with me, we start to see your power. We start to see God how in the midst of our trials as we would persevere, as we would go through our process and then we are sharing. We start to see your mighty power working to bring us together. Father, you, you, we see your mighty power starting to work in our lives and so we start to influence others outside out of our sphere of, of operation. God, Help us not to stifle the Holy Spirit. Help us not to be gossipers and complainers and doubters, God. Father, when we hear prophecies, let us open our hearts to them because, God, we believe that you still speak. Father, help us to hold on to what is good. Help us to stay away, God, from every kind of evil. Today, Father, I reach forth my hands to every person in this auditorium and those who are listening. And I say, God, let your will be done touch your people again. For that person who has that anger problem, for that person who finds curse words coming in the head, for that person who flies off the handle at the drop of a hat, no more. In the name of Jesus, Holy Ghost, I pray even now as they would confess it, as they would release it, as they would start to say to, the, say to you, God, that is true. What Pastor Mark said relating to me, God, I need to stop that. I get angry when I see people doing foolishness and I want to reject them. I know I've been there. I, I see people always doing the same things, like nothing at all seems to be changing their, their story, but God help me to be patient. God, I know I, don't, I can't be patient in my own strength, but God help me to stay the course. Help me, God, to be a helper. Help me, God, to be someone who will show forth your glory. So Father God I say touch your people once again. Renew their strength. God, for the bombardments of the minds, God, I pray their minds will be stayed on you. Father, I pray that the joy of the Lord again shall be their strength. And Father, whatever will come, I pray even now, Holy Ghost, that you will give them, establish them to be able to stand up against every plan of the enemy. I pray, God, that those who did not know who they are would know that they are peculiar people, that they are part of a chosen generation, that they are joint ears with Christ, that they are special. And God, they have delegated authority. So, Father, I pray you will strengthen us that, God, in the midst of whatever comes, one thing that the enemy will never be able to do in love and light is to cause disunity. I speak to every spirit of disunity. Whatever mistakes has happened before, Lord, I pray that that person or persons would, write, would allow you to wipe the slate clean in the name of Jesus. I speak healing and deliverance like only you can in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Put your hands together and give God a praise for your release. <laughs> Folks, we not might, we are going to do better. Look over to somebody and say, we are definitely going to do better. I didn't do it too bad, but we got to do better. Amen? Just for chance, is there anybody here today who do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? We don't like to leave unless we give you an opportunity to give your life to Jesus. If you're here today, you do not know him, you'll say to me, Pastor, I want to give my life to Jesus. Would you just raise your hand? We'll see that hand, and we'll lead you to Christ. Even if you're on Facebook, we can't see your hand, but we can pray for you. Is there one person in the house today who will say to me, maybe you're there saying, well, Pastor, I want to do it yet. Give me to next week. I don't know when next week can hold for you. And I know you might be saying, but Pastor, I want to do it and turn back. Here's my thing to you. Give God a try, and I can guarantee you, if you are truly committed, God will never allow you to go back. Is there one person? Praise God, we don't see that hand. But Father, I want to pray for maybe we are believing that somebody at Facebook has given their life. If that is you, just say this prayer with me quickly. Say, Father, you got to mean it now. There's no magic in the prayer. It's about you committing to Christ. Say, Father, I come to you today recognizing that I am a sinner. I also recognize that the only way I can receive forgiveness from sin is through Jesus Christ. So Lord Jesus, I ask you today to forgive me for all my sin. Come into my heart today as I by faith accept you as my Lord and Savior. And I thank you for doing it and say amen. Father, for that person or persons who have given their lives to the Lord today, I pray now that you will touch them, Lord, form a hedge of protection around them. I pray that will have sense of a freeness, a lightness, knowing God that their sins have been forgiven and forgotten. So, Father, bless them like only you can. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. If you've said that prayer on Facebook, check the information. Give us a call, 436 or email us at lalm at We'll send you our free new converts course. And, yes, we'll attach you to one of our ambassadors who will take you through the material. 
Well, we've come to the end of another broadcast, and we want to thank you for joining us this morning. May God bless you and keep you. May his face continue to shine upon you, and may you experience his peace. Shalom. See us, let's go with a note of praise. Give God a praise. Give God a praise.